Welcome to the Tandem Talk Show, where we help women dial in their nutrition and fitness so that they can lose fat, tone up, and transform their lives. And now your host from Tandem Nutrition, Coach G. Welcome, everyone, to a brand new podcast of the Tandem Talk Show. I could not be more excited to be here with you guys today and with a very special episode. Today, we'll be having a fun conversation with one of our newest coaches, Coach Lee McKinney. Lee, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you guys? How are you doing? Well, I'm doing great. Who do you have with you right there? This is my baby. Her name is Kit. She's going to join us today. <laughs> she is adorable. <laughs> Thank oh you. Well, I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that she's able to join us. And I can't imagine, I know that you had her back in, in January. Is that correct? Yeah, January. Mm-hmm. Wow. How has mom life been for you since, uh, since you had Kit? You know, it is like, they always say it's like the best job ever. And it's like this whole new love, this whole new feeling. And that could not be any more true. Like it is the best thing ever. It's my favorite job so far is just being a mom. She's the best thing ever. And it's just, it's a great time. It really is. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. It's, she's amazing. Yeah. Well, I definitely have some questions about how you overcome some, maybe some new mom challenges when it comes to, you know, staying on track, being consistent, or maybe even working out. But before we do that, um, Lee, I, I do want to talk more about like your background and, you know, you know, and have you tell the audience like who you are and how you got interested into nutrition. So, you know, why don't you start out by telling us like, you know, a little bit about yourself, how, how you got interested in, in nutrition? Yeah, sure. So, You know, I always did. I had two older brothers growing up and they were always involved in sports. And I, I was like that little sister that I would always watch like my brothers like play video games. And if they want to go play in the woods, like I would go play in the woods too. And I would just like play pretend like I was part of the whole scene there. But my middle brother, Travis, he's like a really big role model to me. He was really just, well, he is really athletic. He still is. And he started to kind of have this passion for health and wellness overall. And of course, me as that little sister, I was kind of following his footsteps. And I was like, so I would kind of follow along too. But then I actually was like, no, I, I actually really do enjoy this. I enjoy sports. And then I got involved in the gym and I was like, I really like this. And I like the, you know, the benefits of it. And so with me, I always wanted to be a teacher. And then my senior year of high school is when I really got involved in like the gym scene and I loved it. I loved health and wellness. And so when I got to college, I was stuck. I was like, I don't, man, do I still want to be a teacher or do I want to do more of like a health field or somewhere along that line? But I didn't want to be like a PE teacher. I didn't want to be a health teacher. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I just personally was like, no, that's not quite the route that I want to take. So I changed my um, degree from early elementary education to interdisciplinary health because I was like, what field do I go into? And I really was intrigued by that because it studied all dimensions of health, you know, your physical health, mental, emotional, spiritual, occupational. And I was like, this is great. I can take all different types of classes and courses that are going to just correlate with your overall physical well-being. So that was really intriguing. So outside of college, I managed a gym for two years and that was great. You know, just, it's a great people business and I was able to help people, but it wasn't on a scale that I really wanted to. So that's where I was like health coaching, working one-on-one with people. And that was the best decision ever. I mean, it's just helping people and with a passion of health and wellness and then a passion of helping others, coaching is just, it's it. Like, that's what I needed to do with my life. And it has just been amazing from there. That's incredible. I love that story. It's really crazy how like that one relationship in your life, you mentioned your brother, you can completely change the the trajectory of of how you got interested into what you are today. And you went through a lot of academia, a lot of schoolwork, it sounds like. And, uh, you know, what would you say from your health coaching experience and from your degrees you have, what would you say is your 
your specific area of expertise when it comes to nutrition, fitness, and health coaching? I'd have to say just overall mindset. I mm. mean, most people, you know, who like most clients that I've worked with, they all have one thing in common and it is a bad relationship with food. I mean, period. That's what it is. They, they struggle with that relationship to food and what that's supposed to look like. So that's what I always like to change. I like to kind of get on that like deeper level and kind of really see where it all stemmed from. Most of the time it's childhood and then just go from there and then kind of have them give me examples of like, what have they seen just in society? Like most of the time, the big one is carbs are the worst. They, you know, they make you fat and it's like, no, that's not true. And so I always like to just change their overall mindset coming in and their mindset with themselves. Cause that's another common thing. Most clients that I've like worked with in the past, it, there's one theme there too. And it's really negative self-talk. So that's, those are my two areas of expertise. I would say is changing that mindset with food and just their, the relationship with themselves and their food and their lifestyle, and then changing the way they talk to themselves. I mean, your mind listens to what your mouth says. So if you are constantly yeah. beating yourself up, that is how you're going to view most things in life. That's, that's a strong topic. I think that a lot of coaches don't take that into account throughout their coaching experience with their with their clients because it, you know our mind truly powers everything we do, our beliefs, our values, and how we act and how we stay consistent with certain things that we believe can help us get get us to our goals. So like when you're working with someone and um, when they have negative self talk or mm -hmm. they speak poorly about themselves, like what are what are some simple strategies that you you may give someone or give them to help them overcome that and to work maybe more positive self talk? Well, first, I kind of I reflect. I reflect of what they just said. Like if they said, you know, I did horrible this week, and you know, it was it was a bad week, and so it's like, okay, you said this was a bad week, and they said that you're horrible why would you say that to yourself? You know, and it's that same thing of like, I'll usually reflect because it'll be like, I'm so stupid. I ate this when I shouldn't have, or, you know, it's just their name calling themselves. So I will just say, so this is what I just heard you say. Like you just called yourself stupid or whatever. Like, would you say that to somebody that you love? Of course, they're always like, well, no, of course not. And it's like, then why would you say that to yourself? And it's just, when they're constantly beating themselves up like that, they think that they can't do anything. They think that they can't achieve anything. So I'm always, of course, I'm a very positive person. So it's like, I can, I mean, I sense that kind of right away, and, you know, and it's, so I always try for others to like view that light and it can come off. It's annoying sometimes. I'll be honest. Cause like, I'm just such an optimistic person. I'm like, no, there's the light at the end of the tunnel. We can find it. <laughs> But so I always try to just, I like them to reflect back of like what they're trying to do and what they're trying to achieve. And it starts with how you talk to yourself and remembering what you're trying to achieve. And so it starts with just being nice to yourself, talk nice to yourself, be kind, just like you should be kind to others, be kind to yourself first. I love that. That is so important. And a lot, a lot of things that we do in our coaching too, as you work with us is we talk a lot about like body affirmations, a lot of positive self-talk, mm -hmm. like how important do you feel are speaking out like body affirmations out loud about ourselves? Like, oh, is yeah. that something that you do with your clients? And like, how important is that exactly? Oh, for sure. If it's one of those things, you got to wake up and just look in the mirror when you're getting ready and say, I'm going to do this today, or I am strong. I am con I'm confident. Again, your mind listens to what your mouth says. So the more that you speak highly of yourself, you're going to start believing it. And you're going to start just going through your day with that positive headspace. So I'm all for that. And I will let clients know that all the time. And I will, I'll call them out too. <laughs> I'll call them out if they say, if, you know, if they are being mean to themselves, I'll call them out. And say, whoa, 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 Absolutely. let's rephrase that. <laughs> and sometimes our best friends are those who are bold enough to call us out and who like who who can like recognize what we say to ourselves mm -hmm. and not just let us accept the language or the talk that we're letting go based upon like our own beliefs. So it's having that having that special person, whether it's a friend or a coach in your case, in your corner who can just be truthful to you, who doesn't sugarcoat anything, is 
is, is truly in, invaluable. And so I, I love that about you, Lee. And I think that's one of the first things I noticed when I first met you was just your positive energy that like, I thought I was pretty positive, but when I met you, I'm like, yo, this, this girl is like, she's incredibly, and you're, you're so consistently positive too. So you're not like, there's a positive on one call. Like you're the same person who shows up in the same positive way every single time, which I think is amazing. <laughs> um, how did that start for you? Were you always as positive? You know, I have no idea. I had a track coach in high school, <laughs> I guess in all of my races, I was a sprinter. He like, I guess I was smiling. Heck if I knew that I didn't know I was smiling during my races, but at the end of it, he's like, why are you smiling when you're running? <laughs> and I have no idea. But <laughs> I don't know. I was actually a really shy kid growing up. I was very shy, but gosh, I don't know where it came from. I don't know. I'm that like energy person. I have a good friend in she actually messaged me the other day and she's like, man, I miss you. I'm around so many negative people. And cause I, I Snapchatted her, I Snapchatted her a video and I was talking to Kit and she was like, I missed your energy. She said, that's all I needed to like pick myself up. Cause she's just around so many negative people. So I appreciate other people noticing my positivity and my energy. You know, I just, I, I don't really notice it. So to answer your question, I have no idea where it came from. I'm just, a positive person, I guess, always smiling. <laughs> I love that. No, it's never, of course, never a bad thing. It's not seen often either, but uh, definitely can add to a different level, layer of experience and energy and excitement whenever you're, you know, in a coaching relationship with you without a doubt. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one, one mindset thing I think a lot of clients struggle with, especially my clients and um, clients that are our team is just the, the concept of all or nothing, Right. So like, for example, oh, yeah. one thing I hear a lot about is, man, you know, I've had this bad meal or this, this quote unquote bad meal and I've, I ruined it all. And, you know, as you know, what happens afterwards is they just, they end up like, it's all, it's all ruined. And so they end up binge eating and the rest of the day yeah. goes waste because of their perception that one quote unquote bad food or bad meal really ruined progress for them. You know, how, how often do you see that in your coaching so far? And like, what are some, what are some ways that, women struggling with the all of the mindset can can truly uh, alleviate themselves from thinking that way. Oh, yeah. So talking about themes with most people, most clients, that is one of them. It is an all or nothing mindset. And they have that in most most like views in their life, most things that they do, but especially eating. They could be doing so well. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, they have a donut because the break room had some. So they're like, oh, psh, well, this day is just ruined. I had that donut, you know, forget this day. Let's just go ahead and get, let's just go crazy yeah. today. And sometimes it's for the whole weekend. It's that whole thing of like, I'll start again Monday. And so for me, I'm a big visual person. So the whole like flat tire analogy, which I use that along with coaching too. I always use like a car for an example. Yeah. You know, our clients are like in the driver's seat. I'm in the passenger seat with the roadmap. Like this is our roadmap to success. I'm here to guide you. Let's yeah. go. But you've got full control of what you're going to do and where we're truly going to go. And then so to go along with the whole car thing with the all or nothing mindset. And I've heard it many places, but I love it because it's so true. And it's such a good visual. It's like, OK, you get a flat tire. So you eat that donut with you just going and say, well, psh, forget this day. You're basically saying, well, let me just slash these other three tires then. When really it's like, no, just fix your tire and keep going keep going. Exactly. Yes. yes. I love that analogy. It's so good. And if I can add one thing to this too, is like one thing I think that many people don't realize is just how difficult it is to actually gain one pound of body fat. I think a lot of people, when they get up on the scale in the morning, they see the scale go up. They, they automatically think that that one pound, that two pound increase is body fat, but that's, you know, that's far from the truth because there are at least seven or eight different factors that can change or cause our weight to fluctuate you know, two, three pounds a day. And so, you know, when I tell my clients, you have to, you have to eat 500 calories above your maintenance energy needs every day for a week to gain one pound of body fat. Or in one day, if you, if you see the scale go up from like Thursday to Friday, if you're one pound heavier on Friday, that means that you, and you, if you think it's body fat, which as we know, it's not, it's the not. only way to gain one pound, pound of body fat overnight is to eat 3,500 calories above your maintenance energy needs on it in one one day and for most people that's over five thousand calories that's so many calories and it's like i highly doubt that's what just happened 
Yes, 100%. And so just that, like the realization that like, number one, like you didn't mess up. It's really hard to gain body fat and and you did not eat 5,000 calories. So just understanding that and knowing more about the body too. I think that's so important to, to know that one meal or one weight fluctuation is at the, not the end of your progress, but what you do afterwards can determine how you make progress. You know, keep down the slippery slope of staying off track. Or do you just get back up and say, hey, I understand that happened. I'm going to keep doing what I need to do, you know, to see the progress I'm working hard for. That's why I always say it's like, take it, you know, people always say like one day at a time. I say one meal at a time. Take it one meal at a time. Every new meal, you're like, your next meal is a new opportunity. How are you going to handle that opportunity? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I love the fact that, hey, don't wait until Monday to get back on track. Get back on track the next meal right? Yeah. Uh, or the next morning, if it's like the last meal and, and don't, because more people stay off track, more people regress in the progress, not from what they do throughout their like one eating experience. Like for example, not having the donut will not make or break their progress, but what will have a bigger impact on the progress is, as I mentioned, what they do after having the donut. So do they slash other tires or they do exactly. they keep the car rolling? which it's, it's hard, right? I know dieting is super hard. Another thing too, that I've noticed that having ranges too, with calorie goals and even protein goals and looking at averages for steps as well is so impactful toward our mindset to know that, Hey, we don't have to be perfect every day. As long as we're hitting within our range for calories and macros Mm -hmm. and steps and even workouts, like, like the body doesn't know if you were perfect one day. And, and one thing I say too, a lot is like, one thing that's interesting is People think that like, if you're perfect one day, that you should lose weight the next day. And that's not how that works. Yeah, exactly. And so even the reverse of that, you can still not be perfect and still lose weight. And so there's just so many factors we have to consider. But, you know, along with that, along with like the other nothing mindset and you know, positive self-talk, body affirmations, what are some other things that you run into that you help your clients with to maintain a positive attitude and outlook throughout their fat loss journeys? Obviously, like their mindset with food and the whole like balance of eating and changing that relationship with food, but letting them know and like being upfront with them that you're not going to always be motivated. Like You're just yes. not always going to be motivated. You know, you're not an energizer bunny who can just go forever until it's like, okay, I've got to get new batteries. Let's put them in. You have to really dig deep. And so I'm constantly just reiterating their whys. What got you started in the first place? What is going to keep you disciplined towards those goals, even on those hard days where you have zero motivation? So I, I like, I am always just bringing those whys back into play because they get so focused on the little things, especially the scale. So it's really focusing on like the non-scale victories, but then also focusing on, hey, what got you here in the first place? Especially when it comes to like some of their whys are, I want to feel better in clothes. And that does not have to do with the scale. It has to do with body fat. So it's getting them away from that whole like scale mindset. This is my only form of progress, but it's like, Hey, you didn't whatever, like fit into the dress because of that number on the scale. It was because of a certain amount of body fat. So it's like, that's what we're targeting. It's body composition. That's really what we're going to strive for. So it's bringing that into play. I've even done an exercise before where the member was just, or like the client was just really just done. Just, I can't do this anymore. So I was like, tell you what, I'm going to draw this really beautiful stick figure on this piece of paper right now. (laughs) And I want you, I'm going to put, I put the member's name and then the following year. And I said, just give me some characteristics of this person that you want to be. Who's this future self and what do they look like? What are some of the characteristics? This kind of goes along back with that self-talk. So they start naming all these great things, you know, all of like, I want to do this. And one of them was even just, I want to ride, I want to get on an airplane. I want to fit in on an airplane. And so that was one of them. And so we had all these awesome things for them to achieve. So then I drew another beautiful stick figure on a piece of paper. And I said, describe me now how you see yourself and how, how you're feeling right now. And that's where it was just a ton of negative things. I said, do you see the difference here? And they said, yeah. And I was like, what are, what's just one big thing that, you know, if you left here today and you were done, like, what is one big thing that you can at least do your, do for yourself to get to this future self? Yeah, it was huge. And it was really eye opening. And they're like, 
you know what I needed? It's, it came down to really just self-care. It came down to keeping them a priority because they were a drop off. They, they dropped themselves off of their priority list. And that's all it took was keeping them in their top priority list, their to-do list. And then I was, I mean, she was back with it. She was back with it. And you know what? She ended up being able to get on that airplane and they went to Hawaii. That's amazing. I love hearing that. Such a great story. Thank you for sharing that. (laughs) Yeah, it was, that was a really like proud, proud coach moment. That is huge. Good for you, Lee. That is, that is outstanding. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pretty intense (laughs) exercise. It just kind of, I came out on a whim of like just doing it. Cause I was like, okay, what can I do? I want it like, that's me. I want to help people. I feel like anybody can achieve their goals. We just have to really dig deep with them and know that they can persevere and just start wherever they're comfortable starting. Love that. Yeah. Starting, starting with where you're at, no yep. matter where you're at in your journey is, is so important rather than thinking you have to be 15 chapters ahead or yeah. you compared to your friend be doing this instead, but starting with where you're at with what you have and the time you have is just so, so important. And I hear, t- I hear so many, like I do all our discovery calls here at Tandem. So I hear so many times, like both women and men, you know, putting themselves last on their priority list. And it's, it's interesting how you mentioned kind of, it all comes down to like just taking care of yourself, like self-care, like Mm -hmm. strategies. What are some of the most common self-care strategies that you've heard in your coaching that have maybe been effective for your clients that you maybe want to talk about today to those listening? Yeah. So I've worked with a lot of moms and, you know, it was hard before because I'm like, you know, like, just do it. Like you can do it. Even though you have kids, you can do it. I get it now. I'm a mom too. And it's, it is hard. You might be working with no sleep and it's the last thing you want to do. And again, like you just, you put your, your kids first, you put your family first before you, that is the biggest theme I've ever seen with moms is they put themselves last. So, you know, with, with moms specifically, what I'll focus on one little thing, it's like, whether it's at night, whether it's in the morning, you get up before everyone, or if it is just the littlest thing of you got 80 ounces of water in, you go girl and you give yourself those affirmations, you pump yourself up. And it's just any little thing you can do that is just helping you. Even if it's doing a skincare routine in the morning, do what you got to do, because that is you allowing yourself to take time for you and not feeling selfish about it. So powerful celebrating the small wins should never be overlooked, right? Yeah. Like I have had this, like this rule. If, if someone is willing to take time to bring awareness to their losses or to the, to, to their failures, even no matter how small or big, like we have to give attention to, to every single win, no matter how small and no matter how big, because it's all about momentum. As soon as we start, because what we focus on, um, like grows, right? And so the more we focus on the small things we've done really well, like drinking, you know, 15, 20 ounces of water in the morning or exercise for 20 minutes. That is, that is huge. Yeah. And that could kind of put that snowball in action to continue on those healthy habits towards becoming their best selves or working, having progress towards their goals. Mm-hmm. And then to go along with the all or nothing mindset, if let's say one day they don't get that workout in that they said they wanted to, that's not the end all be all just because you didn't get your workout in. It's totally fine giving yourself some grace in that aspect. Yeah. That's a huge word I use all the time is give yourself some grace. <laughs> and um, then it's just like, what else can you do today? You know, it's like, it doesn't have to be that workout was the only thing that you wanted to achieve, like for your self care, like what else can you do? It's like, yeah. okay, you couldn't get that in. Or it's just a matter of how you're phrasing things. It's not a matter of if you're going to get your workout out in, it's a matter of when are you going to get your workout in? Love that phrase for sure. And I'm kind of curious too, Lee, with you being a new mom, like what are some challenges that you've ran into with putting yourself first and how have you overcome those? So throughout my pregnancy, you know, everybody always focuses on like their labor, like what's your birth plan? My focus was my postpartum plan. What am I going to do? Because, you know, I, I went to the gym four or five days a week even leading up to my 40 weeks pregnancy, like I, I made that a commitment for myself, but it was just part of my routine, like brushing your teeth. So it was just like 
part of what I did. And so those first six weeks postpartum that I was not able to exercise, that was hard. I'll be honest. Like that was really, really hard. And I knew that was going to be hard. So I focused on other just little things. Like I said, like doing my skincare in the morning or just like make sure I shower today, (laughs) like just these little things. Um, but you know, beyond that, man, when I got cleared on, it was a Monday, it was exactly at six weeks. I went to the gym that evening. Like I was so pumped, but some struggles that came along with it, you know, now routine is way different. And cause where before, as soon as I got off work, my husband and I, we'd go to the gym, we'd go to the gym together, but now we can't do that. Cause we have a baby. Somebody's got to watch the baby. So I've pushed my workouts later and it is different. It is a challenge for me because it's like, oh my gosh, it's so late. You've got that five, six o'clock crowd there and it's just way busier. But I think that just kind of goes along with how I've really trained my mindset is again, it's not a matter of like, if it's when, and I'm, I'm going to make it happen because it's important to me and I'm staying disciplined to that goal. So I mean, with challenges, the challenge is I need to remember to take care of myself so that I can be the best mom for my baby and for my husband. Those whys are so, like, I love how you just bring to the surface the whys, my baby, my husband, my health. And like, you know, and you're right too. I think what you said about motivation, motivation is very fleeting, Mm -hmm. but discipline is what keeps the train going. And it's so amazing how you've, you worked out four to five, six times a week up into your 40th week of pregnancy, which is incredible. And it sounds like you're like counting down the minutes until you were approved to go or released to go to go work out again. And um, it's so amazing. You've been able to get back on track and and say not if, but when, like what part of my day is, is yeah. best for me to, to work out. And you make it happen, it seems like. It looks different. It looks different than before, you know, of like what my routine looked like. And I knew it was going to change. I think going in that headspace when you're trying something new, you know, if if it is weight loss, giving yourself that talk of things are going to change, but it's for the better. Like it's, it's going to be worth it. My routine might look a little bit different. What I'm doing might look a little bit different, but I'm going to get results and I'm going to feel so much better. Yes. I love that. Yeah. Having that mindset that just do something, no matter how small it is, you know, give you, Give yourself praise for doing that and understand that if you don't do it one day, it's okay. The next yes. day you can get it done. And also having that, I, lo- I think this is the biggest thing I'm taking away today. Not the if, that the when, not if mentality. Because exactly. if, we, if we question ourselves in doing something, we automatically create an excuse for ourselves to support why, why we don't do something. Or it makes us feel good about, well, I didn't do it. That's okay because I told myself I – maybe wouldn't do it. So having that confirmation that, Hey, I will do it. It's just a matter of a win. Yep. So that's, that's yep. so, so powerfully. Thank you. Very wise. <laughs> you are very wise. And uh, I, I'm so glad we had this time, time to talk today. And it's such, such a powerful interview. Um, and I know that you're taking on some clients. And so I, you know, tell those listening, those who want to work with you or just maybe message you to get, you know, you more, where can people, find you or, or message you to maybe learn more about what you offer and, and what you do. Heck yeah, man. So I am on Instagram and I'm on Facebook. It's just my full name. It's just, well, let's see. Instagram is Lee Tyler McKinney. And then, um, Facebook is Lee McKinney, but reach out. Like I'm an open door. Even if you just have questions, message me. I am. I want to help you. I want to help you so much. We're here for you. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll be sure to put your, uh, your Instagram handle in the show notes as well. So they can, they can reach out to you and have a conversation, but Lee, thank you. Thank you so much for your time today. This was an amazing interview. And I, I, I know that I have you back on soon again, but is there any final words of encouragement that you want to give moms out there, women out there who are struggling right now with losing weight? What would, what's one thing that you like to leave them with? It's never too late. It's never Ooh, too that late. is so good. It's never too late. You know, it's, it's really not like, make yourself a priority. Keep yourself on your priority list. And there we have it. That's my takeaway. It's not too late. It's never too late. Never too late. 
Yeah, that is so good. Thank that you. Three for... Days Gray song. It's not too late. It's never too late. Yeah. <laughs> is it Three Days Grace? It is. Yes. Or is it? I think so. I think so. Yeah. I think I got that CD when I was like 13. It's really hey, good. Me too. Yeah. It's so long ago. <laughs> if you guys know, put it in the comments. We'll love to know who's right. Is it me or Lee? Is it Three Days Grace or is it Nickelback? No, oh, it's no, not it's... Nickelback. Three Days Grace. Team Three Days okay, Grace. Okay. No, it is. It's either. Th- <laughs> I'll go, I'm gonna go check. But everyone, thank you for tuning into our to our podcast today. Go check out Lee on Facebook and Instagram. I'll put her her contact info in the show notes. Her email is also Lee at tandemnutrition.com. So feel free to reach out to her through there as well. But for now, Lee, thank you so much for your time. And we're looking to have you back on the 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 podcast here pretty soon. Awesome. Look, we put my little baby to sleep too. Oh, that is cute. Adorable. <laughs> <laughs> but awesome thank you for having me coach g of course thank you for coming on and, and bye everyone we'll see you again next time bye thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the tandem talk show if you're enjoying the podcast please feel free to rate subscribe and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts we really appreciate that effort until next time